after studying this module you shall be able to know about signal to noise ratio sensitivity and detection limit sources of noise hardware techniques for signal to noise enhancement software techniques for signal to noise enhancement and data treatment by filtering smoothing and averaging first introduction a signal may be defined as the output of a transducer that is responding to the chemical system of interest the signal may be separated into two parts one caused by the analyte and the other caused by other components of the sample matrix and the instrumentation used in the measurement this later part of the signal is known as noise although the ability to separate significant data containing signals for meaningless noise has constantly been a desirable property of any instrument it has become imperative with the demand for progressively more sensitive measurements the amount of noise present in an instrument system determines the smallest concentration of analyte that can be accurately measured and also fixes the precision of measurement at larger concentrations noise reduction or signal enhancement is a primary consideration in obtaining useful data from measurements that involve either weak signal sources or trace amount of analyte the two main methods of enhancing the signal are first the use of electronic hardware devices such as filters or equivalent computer software algorithms to process signals from the measurement as they pass through the instrument and second post measurement mathematical treatment of data among the more useful post measurement methods are statistical techniques in addition to signal enhancement these techniques aid in identifying sources of error and determining precision while providing a method for an objective comparison of results this module will deal with some common noise reduction techniques and briefly review important statistical methods typically used in the treatment of instrumental data first signal to noise ratio as concentrations decrease to trace levels or as signal sources become weak the problem of distinguishing signals from noise becomes increasingly difficult resulting in decreased accuracy and precision in measurements the ability of an instrument system to discriminate between signals and noise is usually expressed as signal to noise ratio that is s by n where s by n is equal to average signal amplitude upon average noise amplitude in the case of dc signals an increase in the s by n ratio usually indicates a reduction in noise and thus a more desirable measurement once the physical or chemical quantity of interest is converted to an electrical signal the s by n ratio cannot be increased by simple amplification alone since each increase in the magnitude of the signal is accompanied by a corresponding increase in the value of the noise thus higher s by n ratios are usually obtained by electronic hardware devices like filters lock in amplifiers etc or software algorithms like ensemble averaging box car averaging fourier transformations etc designed to reduce the contribution of the noise or to extract the signal from the noise next is sensitivity and detection limit a number of parameters including the s by n ratio affect the sensitivity of a particular instrumented method physical and chemical properties of the analyte the response of the input transducer to the analyte and the contents of the sample matrix are some of the more important factors that determine sensitivity sensitivity is defined as the ratio of the change in the instrument response that is io output signal to the corresponding change in the stimulus that is c concentration 
of the analyte. Slopes of calibration curves are used to determine the sensitivity values. It is usually desirable to maximize the sensitivity value unless one wishes to extend the instrument's range of response without diluting the sample. Figure shows a linear response that is constant sensitivity over the entire range of measured concentrations. The non-linear response in figure 2 indicates a constantly changing value for sensitivity as a function of concentration. Measurements of substance C become less sensitive with increasing concentration. Sensitivity may also be expressed as the concentration of analyte required to cause a given instrument response. As the concentration of the analyte approaches zero, the signal disappears into the noise and the detection limit is exceeded. The detection limit is most generally defined as the concentration of analyte that gives a signal X significantly different from the blank or background signal XB. When working with analytes in trace amounts, the analyst is confronted with two problems. Reporting an analyte present when in fact it is absent and reporting an analyte absent when it is present. The literature of analytical chemistry has defined this difference to be an analyte concentration that produces a signal two times the standard deviation of the blank signal. Current guidelines define the detection limit as x minus xb is equal to 3sb, where x is the signal with minimum detectable analyte concentration, xb is the signal of the blank and sb is the standard deviation of the blank readings. Next is sources of noise. It is important for the analyst who uses a particular instrumental method to be aware of the sources of noise and the instrument components used to minimize this noise because noise determines both the accuracy and detection limits of any measurements. Noise enters a measurement system from environmental sources external to the measurement system or it appears as a result of fundamental intrinsic properties of the system. It is generally possible to identify the sources of environmental noise and to moreover reduce or avoid their effects on the measurement. Such is not the case with fundamental noise because it arises from the discontinuous nature of matter and energy. Thus fundamental noise ultimately limits accuracy, precision and detection limits in every measurement. The major kinds of noise associated with solid state electronic devices are thermal, short and flicker. First fundamental noise. Thermal noise. Noise that originates from the thermally induced motions in charge carriers is known as thermal noise. It exists even in the absence of current flow. Since thermal noise is independent of the absolute values of frequencies, it is also known as white noise. Thermal noise is sometimes referred to as Enquist noise after the physicist who derived the equation or Johnson noise commemorating the engineer who first measured it. Next is short noise. The magnitude of short noise is much smaller than that of thermal noise. This noise originates from the movement of charge carriers as they cross the NP junctions or arrive at electrode surfaces. Since these motions involve the movements of individual charge carriers, variations of current due to short noise are random. Next is flicker noise. The third kind of fundamental noise, flicker noise, is observed for low frequency signals. The physical origins of this noise are not well understood. Although all solid state devices are subject to flicker noise, field effect transistors that is FETS seem to be affected less than bipolar devices. Flicker noise in amplifier systems is commonly referred to as drift. In sensitive measurements, 
flicker noise may be eliminated by avoiding the use of low frequencies. Next is environmental noise. Environmental noise involves the transfer of energy from the surroundings to the measurement system and typically occurs at specific frequencies or a comparatively narrow frequency of bandwidth. Two of the most common sources of environmental noise are the electric and magnetic fields produced by 60 Hz electrical transmission lines and also at frequencies corresponding to the harmonics. Further, sources of environmental noise are reflected radiant energy, mechanical vibration and electrical interaction between different instruments. A reduction or elimination of this noise involves shielding the circuits and wires used in signal transmission from external sources of energy. Proper grounding of all instruments and the transmission of signals at frequencies well removed from those of environmental noise are specific techniques for minimizing this noise. Next is hardware techniques for signal to noise enhancement. To avoid losing data, the signal from the input transducer should be sampled at a speed twice that of the highest frequency component of the signal according to the Enquist sampling theorem. Adherence to this theorem is significant to obtain dependable results from either hardware or software S by N enhancement methods. First is filtering. Although amplitude and the phase relationship of input and output signals can be used to discriminate between meaningful signals and noise, frequency is the property most commonly used as discussed in the previous section while noise can be reduced by narrowing the range of measured frequencies environmental noise can be eliminated by selecting the proper frequency three kinds of electronic filters are used to select the band of measured frequencies low pass filters that allow the passage of all signals below a predetermined cutoff high pass filters that transmit all frequencies above a given cutoff point and bandpass filters that combine the properties of the other two filters to pass only a narrow band of frequencies. The simplest filters are composed of passive circuit elements with the transmitted frequencies determined by values of the individual circuit components. Bandpass filters can be designed using operational amplifiers. Next is integration. Integration of DC signals for precisely limited time periods is a powerful way to reduce white noise. The coherent signal adds directly with respect to the integration time, whereas the random noise adds as the square root of the integration time. Therefore, the S by N ratio increases with the square root of the integration time. Although a simple RC filter can be used to integrate signals, an operational amplifier with a capacitor in the feedback loop usually serves as a hardware integrator. Analog to digital converters such as voltage to frequency or dual slope devices have built in S by N enhancement as a result of the integration techniques used in the signal conversion circuits. Next is modulation or demodulation. If the signal and noise cannot be separated by filtering, it is often advantageous to shift the signal of interest away from the noise frequency. To accomplish this, the signal is first transposed onto a carrier wave that has a desirable frequency. Then it is transmitted to an amplifier tuned to the frequency of the carrier signal. And finally, the original signal is recovered from the carrier wave. The first process is known as modulation. The final one as demodulation. Modulation or demodulation techniques can be used to process a signal in a region of minimum noise and also to discriminate between signal and noise on the basis of the signal's unique modulation 
configuration relative to the random pattern of the noise. This technique can be used for example to relocate signals away from DC where flicker noise is at its maximum by signals impressed upon it. Common examples are both amplitude and frequency modulation used in radio broadcasting and in optical spectrophotometers. Next is active filtering or tuned amplifiers. Even when the signal is processed in a relatively noise-free environment, some noise will always be passed because of the bandwidth necessary to transmit the signal and the difficulty of obtaining and holding a match between signal frequencies and the filter bandpass. The lock-in or phase sensitive amplifier offers a solution to these problems. Using a combination of signal frequency and phase relationships, it discriminates between both flicker and white noises. The functional components of a lock-in amplifier include a modulator, a multiplier and a low pass filter. Next is boxcar integrators. The boxcar integrator is a relatively simple method of signal enhancement for repetitive signals. It periodically samples the same portion of a signal for a fixed period of time and then averages the samples using a low pass RC filter. This Triggerable gated integrator is a versatile measurement device. It provides S by N enhancement for the portion of the signal that is sampled. This technique has found wide application in instruments that require pulsed signal detection. It is best used for S by N ratio reduction in repetitive signals, although it can be used for more complex variable input waveforms. When compared to the average value of a single pulse, boxcar integration gives S by N enhancement equal to the square root of the number of pulses integrated. Since noise accumulates during the sampling time, further increases in the S by N ratio result from the shortened total sampling time of the boxcar method as compared to the time required to average a single pulse. Next is software techniques for signal to noise enhancement. The increased use of instruments that contain built-in microcomputers has increased the importance of software techniques for data acquisition and signal to noise enhancement. Operations such as filtering, linearization and attenuation formerly accomplished by hardware devices are now achieved by software resident in the microcomputer component of the instrument. Software operations offer the advantages of flexibility and diversity. For example, a variety of software filters can be implemented by changing computer algorithms, whereas considerable effort may be required to change hardware filters. Nevertheless, in situations where the computer cannot execute the required function at a satisfactory rate, implementation with hardware components is necessary. The minimum hardware required for software signal processing functions is analog signal conditioning circuits and an analog to digital component as well as the microcomputer chips. The rates of sampling the analog data and of the analog to digital conversions must be fast enough to provide adequate resolution of the analog signal and thus ensure minimum loss of information. Although the resolution increased with the sampling rate, the upper limit of resolution is determined by the speed of the computer and the memory available for data storage. The minimum frequency required for accurate sampling known as the Enquist frequency should be twice that of the highest frequency component found in the data set. Each data point requires two coordinates, frequency and amplitude. If the sampling occurs at a rate less than the minimum, it is not clear which frequencies correspond to given amplitude. If the sampling frequency significantly exceeds this minimum frequency, no additional information 
is transferred and the noise may increase because of the larger frequency bandwidth associated with faster sampling rates. Sampling rates corresponding to the fundamentals and harmonics of known environmental noise frequencies should be avoided. Once the data are in digital form, a variety of software enhancement techniques may be used to increase the signal to noise ratio. Although these software techniques are readily available and widely used, caution should be exercised in their applications. The analyst should understand the advantages of each technique as well as potential problems such as undersampling, oversmoothing and the time required to apply the technique to a set of data points. Digital filtering technique. Three of the most commonly used software signal enhancement techniques are first boxcar averaging, second ensemble averaging, third smoothing that is weighted digital filtering and fourth Fourier transformations. Next is data treatment by filtering, smoothing and averaging. We can see in the table the technique, its function, S by N improvement, time required, advantages and disadvantages. The various techniques mentioned are boxcar averaging, it is a software, ensemble averaging and unweighted digital filter and also analog filter hardware. Next is evaluation of results. Total control of experimental variables is usually difficult and often impossible. Sampling methods, analysts techniques and instrument responses are potential sources of error. Statistical methods provide a means for objectively evaluating the source and amount of error in analytical methods. The common phrase within experimental error is meaningless if the magnitude of this error is not defined through the use of statistical techniques. First, the types of errors. To obtain reliable results from an analytical method, sources of error must be identified and either eliminated or minimized. Errors may be classified as one of two types, random, indeterminate or systematic, that is determinate. Since the intrinsically uncertain nature of the measurement technique is the source of random error, this kind of error occurs in every analysis. Thermal, short and flicker noise discussed earlier in this module are sources of random error. The magnitude of the random error is usually small and can therefore be minimized by filtering methods, either hardware or software. The second kind of error, systematic or procedural error, causes results to deviate from the expected values in a constant manner. Sources include improper instrument calibration procedures, insufficient purity of reagents and improper operation of the measurement instrument. This kind of error cannot be reduced by the application of statistical method. Systematic errors may often be identified and minimized by modifying the analytical procedure. Next is expression of errors. Error may be expressed in absolute terms as difference between an analytical result x and the known true value that is mu. d is equal to mu minus x. When this difference is expressed as an unsigned number, it is known as absolute error. The relative error is used to determine the accuracy of measurement and typically expressed as the percentage of the known true value. Since relative error is a dimensionless number, it can be used to determine the accuracy of results as well as to compare the accuracies of results expressed in different units. Next is precision and accuracy. Accuracy may be defined as the agreement of a measurement with the known true value for the quantity being measured. Precision is concerned with the ability to reproduce the same values for a set of parallel observations, while the accuracy of a measurement is determined by many factors. The precision is often limited by noise alone. Next is precision and significant figures. 
evaluation of an analytical method to discover the source and magnitude of errors requires careful acquisition and processing of data as well as appropriate statistical methods. Initial data must be reported with a precision that is indicated by the number of significant figures. Subsequent operations and calculations involving these data must preserve the correct number of significant figures. Subsequent operations and calculations involving these data must preserve the correct number of significant figures so that the results give a true indication of both the accuracy and precision of the analysis. Moreover, unless the proper number of significant figures is maintained, the results of any statistical treatments are meaningless. Next is statistical methods and their applications. Data analysis can be said to be concerned with the study of populations and variation. If each measurement is thought of as an individual value, then repetition of the measurement produces a cluster or aggregate of values known as the population. Infinite repetition will generate that parent population or universe. The three major functions of statistics are first to determine the properties of the aggregate population, second to study the variations among the individual measurements and the variations between the values of individual measurements and the average values of the aggregate and third to reduce a large amount of data to a more easily comprehensible form. Other statistical methods that are routinely used in analysis are the Q-test, T-test, etc. in addition to individual tests for significance of results, control charts, confidence limits, etc. Next is accuracy and instrument calibration. Proper calibration or standardization of instruments is essential in obtaining accurate analysis. The choice of a calibration technique is affected by the instrumental method. Instrument response, interferences present in the sample, metrics and number of samples to be analyzed. Three of the most commonly used calibration techniques are the analytical or working curve, the method of standard additions and the internal standard method. First, the analytical curve. In the analytical or working curve technique, a series of standard solutions containing known concentrations of the analyte are prepared. These solutions should cover the concentration range of interest and have a matrix composition as similar to that of the sample solutions as possible. A blank solution containing only the solvent matrix is also analyzed. And the net readings, standard solution minus blank, that is the background, are plotted versus the concentrations of the standard solutions to obtain the working calibration curve. Next is method of standard additions. When it is impossible to suppress physical or chemical interferences in the sample matrix, the method of standard additions may be used. The instrument response must be a linear function of the analyte concentration over the concentration range and must also have a zero intercept, that is zero signals for zero concentration. The method of standard addition is widely used in electroanalytical chemistry to obtain results that are more accurate than those obtained using calibration curves. Next is method of internal standard. An internal standard is used to minimize differences in the physical properties of a series of sample solutions that contain the sample analyte. In this method, a fixed quantity of a pure substance is added to samples and standard solutions alike. The responses of the analyte and internal standard each corrected for background are determined and the ratio of the two responses is calculated. The internal standard should be a substance similar to the analyte with an easy measurable signal that does not interfere with the response of the analyte. Isotopic dilution. This is a special case of the method of internal standards that is used for quantitative determinations in radiochemical and mass spectral analysis. This technique measures the yield of a non-quantitative process. 
or it enables an analysis to be performed where no quantitative isolation procedure is known. Comparison of the three methods. Each of the methods has its advantages and limitations in quantitative analysis. If the analysis involves a large number of samples in a matrix with a known general composition, then the use of a calibration curve is favored. Standard addition is generally used when only a few samples are to be analyzed in a complex mixture. If the composition of the sample matrix is complex and the analysis includes a number of samples, then the method of standard additions may be the procedure of choice. Analysis that would otherwise require difficult quantitative separations may be performed using isotopic dilution. Next is chemometrics. Many of the techniques discussed in this module belong to an area known as chemometrics. The application of mathematical and statistical methods to chemical measurements in order to acquire chemical information on individual samples. These methods provide improved signal resolution and calibration by extracting increased information from the measurements. Major subdivisions of chemometrics are statistics, resolution, calibration, signal processing, modeling and parameter estimation, optimization, factor analysis, pattern recognition, image analysis, library searching of spectra, graph theory and structural handling and artificial intelligence. Topics in this area are assuming increased importance as computer software becomes the critical interface between instruments and the resulting chemical information. We'll end this module with summary. In this module, we learned about signal to noise ratio, sensitivity and detection limit, sources of noise such as thermal noise, short noise, flicker noise and environmental noise. Hardware techniques for signal to noise enhancement such as filtering, integration, modulation or demodulation, active filtering and boxcar integrators. Software techniques for signal to noise enhancement by digital filtering techniques like boxcar averaging, ensemble averaging and weighted digital filtering. Evaluation of results, types of errors, expression of error, precision and accuracy. Accuracy and instrument calibration by various methods such as analytical curve, standard additions and internal standards.